intuition, which I call knowing, the sixth sense. I believe women have, we have seven senses. Five of them are the physical, yeah. sight, hearing, touch, uh, scent. Did I lose one there? Taste. Taste. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But we have two, two spiritual ones. And I call it, it's knowing, the sixth sense, and the uh, sense of wonder, which is the seventh sense. And intuition is always trying to speak to us. Animals survive on intuition, and women thrive on intuition. But we're so used to second-guessing ourselves that we don't trust this is, it. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to encourage every day, is trust yourself in just little ways. Let it be your your creative science experiment. The intuition can come to us in many ways. I call her she who should be obeyed because she is always looking out for it. And it can be a whisper, it can be a shout, it can be something that you hear in a song, it can be a physical feeling. Many people want to navigate life with peace and joy, but struggle to connect to their intuition. They find themselves overwhelmed, burned out, and frustrated. My name is Francesca Phillips, and I'm obsessed with spirituality and psychology and how the two can intersect to help you live a successful and intuitive life. Each of us can accomplish amazing things through balance and healthy habits instead of burnout. Consider this your go-to resource for where spiritual wellness and mindful productivity meets practical wisdom. If you're craving positivity and want to know how to find the answers within, instead of searching endlessly without, then you're in the right place. Get ready to feel supported and inspired. This is the Good Space Podcast. You're listening to the Good Space Podcast, episode number six. Before we dive in, I want to give my warm appreciation to our reviewer of the week, Miss Boston23. And she says, I am in love with this podcast. It's hard to find podcasts that make me feel uplifted and motivated, but Francesca from the Good Space does such an amazing job. I have enjoyed every episode so far and can't wait for the next. This is a must subscribe podcast. Thank you so much, Miss Boston 23. I'm so glad you feel uplifted and motivated after listening to the show. Thank you. Thank you for sharing such kind words. Today, I'm interviewing the wonderful Sarah Bonbronick. The Sunday Telegraph said that Sarah might be described as the Isaac Newton of the simplicity movement. And USA Today said that she speaks to the very soul of frazzled modern women who suffer from a lethal surge of impossible expectations. Time Magazine called her the Martha Stewart of the soul. Sarah's groundbreaking book, Simple Abundance, has sold over 5 million copies, topped the New York Times bestsellers list for two years, and has been translated into 28 languages. Her book, Simple Abundance, is also responsible for introducing two concepts, the gratitude journal and the term authentic self into the American conversation. Oprah Winfrey has called Sarah's work life-changing, and Sarah has been a frequent guest on The Oprah Winfrey Show and owns Super Soul Sunday. She even inspired Oprah to start a gratitude journal. Additionally, Sarah has been a contributing editor of Good Housekeeping and a nationally syndicated columnist for the Washington Post Writers Group and was named as one of the 15 women redefining what it means to be 50 today by Moore Magazine. Simple Abundance has changed and touched my life for the last decade through breakups, moves, and career changes. So I'm honored, excited, and grateful, Sarah, that you are taking the time to chat with us today. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, we're going into 2020 and it was such perfect timing, I feel, for Simple Abundance because I've been reading it for like basically 10 years and every time my friends have been going through something or they need something that helps them feel understood, that was always a book that I told Told them them. to buy immediately. So perfect timing. Um, Before Simple Abundance though, you had already published two books on Victorian family life and was about to publish a third on Victorian details. The only thing is that you weren't excited about that third book. I think you had asked your intuition what you needed to do. And so you got the impression to write a hundred reasons why you're happy now. So from this space, you started writing down grateful moments, which was the foundation for Simple Abundance. And it was it became the guiding principle of the book. So a lot of my listeners struggle with hearing their own intuition. How did you know your intuition was guiding you in a new direction? And how did you get the courage to listen to it? Well, Francesca, I think Uh, it's very interesting because uh, when I was told, I think that intuition is the Morse code of how we hear the spiritual. Uh, Simple abundance will work no matter what your spiritual belief is is because it's creative and it's practical. But I really believe that the untapped, our untapped ability to create, bring our dreams into the world and to be a force for good in the world 
but really to just have the light that we yearn for. That, that intuition uh, is our invisible uh, guide. But when I sat down at the dining room table, I was absolutely exhausted by the whining I did in my head. And I don't think that women complain too much uh, to their uh, friends because we wouldn't have it. But I think that there's a constant whining when we're frustrated and we feel like our dreams are denied and we don't know what to do. And, you know, we're doing everything. We're consciously connecting the dots, but we're getting nowhere. When I, when I say I was whining to myself in my head and my heart, and I was also whining to heaven. And I just, you know, I heard this voice. I recognized it not as my own. And it's more like marching orders. And um, so that's when I, you know, I want you to sit down here and give me a hundred reasons why you're grateful for your life exactly as it is right now. And money can't be on the list. So, wow. Six hours later, I and I needed to go pick up the carpool and as many pots of tea, I had over you know a hundred blessings. And I was very I was humbled and I I felt bad that I sounded like an ungrateful, an ungrateful brat. And that's when gratitude became my, it was a science experiment, all right, a spiritual science experiment, because uh, I think skeptics make the best seekers. Mm. And I started to, to write little moments of what happened down. <laughs> I wrote them on post-it notes. I wrote them on index cards. I wrote them on back of envelopes. Just where, whatever I could find. If something, uh, a moment happened, you know, that was, wow, a fleeting moment, I would capture it on any kind of piece of paper. So then I thought, we, why don't you just put them in a journal? So it would be easier than uh, <laughs> having to look for all of these papers. Uh, so that's what I started to do. And then yeah. after about two months, I noticed that I was feeling calmer. I was more content, wow. but the outside world had not, not changed. What, before I, I started my gratitude list, you know, it was the period of downshifting. Uh, Everybody in the country was really tightening your belt. Uh, people were losing their jobs a thousand a day, and it was very scary. So downshifting was uh, the uh, only, you know, the only game in town. But downshifting sounded uh, so uh, punitive. Uh, what I was feeling you know, felt uh, so buoyant. And I realized that gratitude was the buffer. That was the buffer. And I thought, uh, oh, well, if you do this for two months, you're, you're going to be different on the inside. And that's when I knew I had a book. That's what I wanted to write. And blessedly, the, you know, simple abundance came into my brain in neon letters. <laughs> and <laughs> really, really when, when neon letters happen, you, you pay attention. Yes. And I said, that, that's it. That's it. So then, then I started that journey. And the journey would take me five years. And for the first three, uh, for two years, I was rejected by every publisher in America. But I kept writing. I kept showing up every day. Mm. But that struggle to bring simple abundance into the world was massive. There would be so many days when I would have nothing, I would think to be grateful for. And so I put down my basic, especially like my agent, Chris Tomasino, got to the point where she would group a few rejections at a time. She didn't let me, she didn't let me know every day. But oh. every, about every three weeks, she, she very gently gave me the bad news. Wow. So yeah. there are going to be some days when, you know, you feel like crying yourself to sleep. And what I learned was when we uh, uh, hurl faith across the room and you know just yeah. sob and feel so alone and so desolate and in such despair gratitude really sits at the end of our bed waiting to comfort us i just wanted other women to know that that's really the motivating force behind the dream of simple abundance that's really wonderful and i really appreciate you sharing the fact that it wasn't easy like even though you received that revelation and you received that inspiration you still had those moments of doubt and yet you you yeah, showed up like you like kept writing, writing you kept believing okay. in what you felt well yes you know an artist and i i believe that all of us all women are artists of the everyday mm. you are you are an artist in what you, you create for others, right. in your website, and in, in your positive encouragement. I mean, those are your paint colors. Uh, and uh, so we're artists of the everyday. And 
we have to understand that, first of all, that, that seems very radical. And if, if you've not grown up in a creative uh, environment, and most women, most of us haven't, yeah, yeah. unless, uh, you know, you have uh, a uh, gift, yeah. you dancing you know, from the know. time you're two. Um, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> you know, you have to. We don't think of ourselves as artists, but the everyday is the canvas. Every day is the canvas of our lives. But when you give yourself over to to the work, you surrender to the work. Uh, I love Madeline Lengo, the author of A Wrinkle in Time. She was rejected 20 times for that book. You know, she had a very strong faith. And she, it's a, she has a wonderful book on faith and art called uh, Walking on Water. But what she says is you have to be willing to be a servant of the work. And I think that what that means in our lives is you have to be willing to do it. You have to show up. You can pretend you're a temp. You're a creative temp. If you're not, and we go through these periods when we don't feel creative at all. And yes. you're, we're dry and we just want to give the whole damn thing up. If you pretend that this is acting, oh, okay, I'm just a creative I'm, temp. I'm just I'm holding it back until the yeah. artist comes back. I'm, I'm holding the space for it. So you get to those days you, and you think, I have nothing to be thankful for. Um, I was just turned down. What is this? My 20th? Is this 25? Why am I doing this? This is ridiculous. And you've let me down. I mean, what the hell? This has been going on for two years. Those are the nights, you know, you write down my daughter, her health, my husband, his health, my health, the cats. I'm able to do this. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do it, but I, (laughs) you know. Tomorrow is another day. And so you have your basics there. And there have been so many times in my life when I've gone back to my basics. But that's what gratitude is. That gratitude is the foundation that can fuel your creative energy. Oh, I love that because with a lot of my audience, we definitely talk about the importance of the foundational habits. I love morning routines and gratitude is definitely a part of that. I just love how beautifully you put that as women, we're artists of the everyday and that it takes going back to those basics and really just having that faith and continuing to keep doing the work and being a slave to it, even if you don't know when or how it's gonna happen. And so it it ties it in nicely to my next question. In a December entry in Simple Abundance, I was reading it at some point this month. You said for women, big things are expected of us and we better be about it. We need to take care of ourselves so that we have the strength and patience to care for who and what we love. So what does your morning routine look like and why is it important to you? I know you said gratitude and I just wanted to see if there were other things that you did and why. I mean, the morning is where we start our day. The morning can determine how the rest of the day is going to flow or not because we live in such a different world than now, today, than it was in 1995. And I'll get to the morning routine in a minute, but I just want to mention that the world we're living in today, the 24-7 breaking news culture that we are existing in, the social media mirage of perfection, and it is mirage. We can't be perfect, even the great creator after the world was created, said it's very good. But no, women, we will be perfect if we're, if we're trying anything. Yes. Which, of course, is, is the secret saboteur. We are so skilled at self-sabotage. But I, I start my day I'm not connected to the world. I wake up and I feed the cats because they're a very early rise mm-hmm. and I make a pot of tea and I bring it back to bed with me. I have that first cup of tea and I read something that inspires me or gives me hope or encourages me. I'm passionate about what I call women with a past, mm-hmm. women who've gone before and all types of women in all kinds of situations and how They all reached the point of no return, and they're so tired. They just, they're so exhausted, and you can just feel, oh, the desperation in their voices from from their memoirs, and then they went forward. They took that one more step, and every woman that I've discovered, every inspirational woman, every woman that we admire, doesn't matter what her path was, she had a point where she could give up or go on. Mm. And they went on. That is you know, it's, it's the know. Scarlett O'Hara <sighs> moment when she's on the bridge. <laughs> she raises her fist and she says, God is my witness. I will never be hungry again. Not me or my kin or 
I mean, it's that kind of soul moment, that kind of destiny, really. It is your destiny. You can't get to your destiny without reaching that moment of complete despair. I think that's because we can't do it alone. We have to have the spiritual moxie to continue. And I love the word moxie. It's a, it's an old-fashioned word from it's a great word. the Victorian time. It yeah. was a health food drink. Oh. And uh, it, was, it had no, no alcohol, but it was a health food drink. And I just love what the, the word moxie represents to me. It, it represents grace and grit and gumption. So I will read stories. I love women's stories, mem women's memoirs, women's li private lives. And yeah. there's an idea that what w women do in their writings and in their truthfulness, women uh, who have died, that uh, that no. is such yeah. a, a helping hand for us. But I think in my life and in my work, uh, I just wanted to have a conversation with my reader. Um, I write for only one woman. That's you when you're reading me. That's the listener. If she's reading me, we're just having a real, truthful, loving, gentle conversation. Oh, there's much laughter if we, can, if we can just get to that point. So that's what I do. It's sort of like I fill the, the well before I can face the world. Mm. And, um, you know, it's after my second cup of tea that I'm ready then to go and see what came overnight and, and you know, start the, start the business of the day. Now, when I was working on Simple Abundance, the 25th anniversary edition, Ooh. it's like, I don't know how did that happen? That's amazing. Uh, I do the same morning thing, but I was at the computer. I mean, I was writing. It was a very tough deadline, but it was the happiest writing I'd ever done because it just had a momentum to calm our lives. And mm. I'm a very, I've learned to be a very disciplined writer. And so uh, that was, that was certainly part of the yeah, writing of Simple, Simple Bonnets, the, the new one, which is 128 pages longer than the, the, the first one. Awesome. So I re <laughs> really had a lot I wanted to talk to you about. I love oh that. Oh my gosh, you said so many wonderful nuggets of wisdom, uh, especially the part where you said that you come to a point, every person comes to a point where you give up or you go on. And that's just, wow, that's so powerful. And everything else that you said as well and I love that you also said you write for that one reader and, and Simple Abundance really does make women feel seen and heard. Um, I posted um, snippets of different entries on Instagram and without fail women reach out asking about your book and they will often buy it because they just no. feel this magnetism towards what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Something and someone is speaking directly to their soul and you get it. So mm -hmm. in Simple Abundance you often talk about how women are complex divine beings who often lose a sense of harmony because we're overextending ourselves, making promises without thinking, which is something that I've had to work on this year and having zero time in our ca in our calendar for ourselves. And so at the time, blocking out two hours a week for self time was seen as revolutionary and impossible. But you touched on this earlier that now it's, you know, the social media, we have news streams 24 seven, we just have everything going on all the time. And our attention span is basically less than a goldfish, which I think you said was eight seconds or, or even less. <laughs> Francesca, uh, 10 years ago, it was 12 seconds. Oh my gosh, yeah, so it just... This, this, this was a study done by Microsoft 10 years ago. We, yeah. we were better than a goldfish. We were we were at 12, and the goldfish is at 9. Oh boy. Second, and that now now it's less than a goldfish. <laughs> oh my but, gosh. So, I mean, when you sort of <laughs> just meditate on that, you know, today, I, I think that what I'm yeah. trying to do in, in the simple abundance for the 21st century is I'm encouraging you to create a buffer zone in the morning and in the evening. Mm. I want you to have an hour, but I'd be happy, and you would too, if you had a half hour at least. Just yeah. try to keep the media and the phone and the computer, just try not to go into the day with that being your only grounding, because you're not. You're not going to be grounded. And what happens now that didn't happen and what's so disturbing is that every natural disaster in the world, which are getting more horrific because we didn't take care of, of the, the earth, mm -hmm. but every natural disaster or every incident of violence, oh. and we're sucked right in because it's our heartstrings. I mean, we look at strangers in danger and we can't do anything we can't do anything to help them 
And so what that does is it internalizes our feeling and you, we become stunned by sorrow. Sorrow that we can't change, we don't know what to do. And you, you have to create a protective barrier for yourself. In, in this simple abundance too, I have a caution closet for the first time so that we can try to prepare for the unexpected, which happens all the time now, to bring us a sense of solace when we feel helpless when we can't do anything. For example, when I was writing this book, I, I just knew that I wanted to be able to help someone in a crisis, a stranger. Um, so I learned CPR. And now, I hope I never have to use it, please God. <laughs> but now, if there was somebody that was in trouble, I wouldn't have to stand back. But it's also for our own contentment, you, you see. So I just really, and I encourage you, I mean, the last thing any woman needs is to be yelled at. I mean, just forget that. I just want to encourage you to be able to take care of others, but you have to take care of yourself first. Yeah, that, that's really it. I mean, that's your sacred your sacred duty. Yeah. I I'm always started off yeah. Simple Abundance from, from the beginning, yeah. and it yeah. still continues with a quote from Louise Bogan, who, who was America's first poet laureate. And she said, in a time lacking in truth and certainty and filled with angu anguish and despair, no woman should be shamefaced in attempting to give back to the world through her work a portion of its lost heart. And that's mm. what I meant with big things are expected of us. Wow. That is so just... powerful. And I love how you really took that to heart and, and have shared it with so many of you us. Know, and, and what it sounds like, it's just finding that buffer zone, like you said, and making that space in your life so that you act from stillness rather than just being reactive to all the busyness around us, which I love. And that gives us so much power. It gives us a lot of power to be able to create a life that we love. One and thing, I think this was on your site, which I just loved. Um, it said the world needs dreamers and the world <laughs> needs doers, but above all, the world needs dreamers who do. And I feel like that is absolutely the people that I interact with on a daily basis and that I like talk to a lot and, and who really resonate with this message. So what is a dream of yours right now? And what are you focusing on most these days? I know you just released the 25th anniversary <laughs> version of Simple Abundance, but like what's what next? What's happening now? Yeah, or yeah. You know, Normally a book takes two years. Publishing houses like have two years. But I really felt, and it was a passion, that this book had to be out now because we, we all don't. need comforting now. We need somebody to say it's going to be all right. It is, I promise. I don't know how, but... I know it's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. So it was a really rushed deadline. But when I think of the dreams that I have right now, I want to recreate a home for myself, a real home. And I want to go back to a rural life. One of the reasons that I so love England, where I had a life for 10 years, was it was very rural. And I could see sheep outside my kitchen window in the field. And I love horses. And I, I want to get back to writing. Uh, I've had a screenplay uh, that I wanted to do for many years. Wow, that's great. I'm, I'm going to experiment with that. My, my work is going to be, you know, getting the message out to, to uh, women that you are so important. You are so, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> if you only knew it. And you're so amazing. I'm in awe of you. You do so much for so many people every day. And, you, you know, I really respect and admire you. And I really want to share those stories of the women who have gone before because they are our legacy. We can think of them and they are like our great, great grandmothers, our great grandmothers. It doesn't matter who they were, yeah. but we can claim them. We can claim their truth and yeah. use it to help ourselves. Wow. And, you know, I just want to say, turn your computer off at 8 p.m. Yeah. Please. Okay. Please. I'm going to start doing Gosh. that. She said so many things that just resonated so, so much. Bad. And I know, I know we have a little bit over time, but what would you say to someone eager to accomplish something great in their life, but who may feel unclear, overwhelmed, or discouraged? Oh, well, let's go back to your intuition. Okay. okay. In the beginning of our talking, I said it wasn't intuition that sent me to the dining room table to write out the gratitude list. But intuition, which I call knowing, the sixth sense. I believe women have, we have seven senses. Five of them are the physical, yeah. sight, 
hearing, touch, uh, scent. Did I lose one there? Taste. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we have two, two spiritual ones. And I call it, it's knowing the sixth sense and the uh, sense of wonder, which is the seventh sense. And intuition is always trying to speak to us. Animals survive on intuition and women thrive on intuition. But we're so used to second guessing ourselves that we don't trust this is, it. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to encourage every day is trust yourself in just little ways. Let it be your creative science experiment. The intuition can come to us in many ways. I call her she who should be obeyed because she is always looking out for it. And it can be a whisper, it can be a shout, it can be something that you hear in a song, it can be a physical feeling. You can feel nervous. Anytime you're about to make that creative leap, you get nerves. You get nerves in your stomach. You get, oh my God, I can't do this. And again, so many actresses know this. You literally are frozen with fear. It's the next step as it was before. It's the next step to the stage and that becomes a creative energy that is the power of their performance. So you feel jittery or you just sometimes, of course my favorite way is the sense of calm. I don't believe that intuition, unless it's in our life saving mode, I believe that our intuition is calm, is a sense of calm. This is going to be all right, but I just know. And women will use intuition if they're married and they have children they will use intuition for their children but they don't use it for ourselves and all i can say is listening to your intuition after gratitude becoming comfortable with your intuitive self honoring your intuitive self is the second most important thing that you'll ever do to keep yourself hope to find your authentic self and all dreams are big all dreams um, of them, especially the one that you have. And I mean, you yeah, as a woman, Francesca, but I'm also talking to your listeners. Yes, absolutely. Um, simple abundance was huge, but I didn't know that. I did not know that. Wow. I believe one of our greatest blessings <laughs> is that heaven, that the spiritual yeah, and creative yeah. world, they operate on the need to know. You don't need to know how hard this is going to be. Ooh. All you have to do, yeah. <laughs> because if you did, you would never do it, let me tell you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's why it's the best. Yeah. Wow. You know, yeah, that's it. That's really the secret. You can never break it up into enough mosaic pieces. So that's not your job. <laughs> your, your job is just to show up for work for that dream and show up on a regular basis. If you're working at something else right now and you have a dream of being a writer or you have a dream of being a painter, we all have to do our day job. Sometimes yep. our day job, we're doing it our entire life but as we're following our dream. But you always just have to do it. Young writers will ask me and I say, your creative discipline is the most important part. A writer is somebody who finishes a blog post who finishes an essay, a poem, a chapter. You have to finish it. And the way you do that is by showing up for work, showing up whatever time that you have, have allowed yourself, especially if you're working at something, at something else. Those big dreams, God bless them and God has blessed them. And the mother of courage has blessed them. But you only have to do the next step. And the next step is listening to your intuition, your sense of knowing. So you see how it's all one circle. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. You said so many wonderful, wonderful things. And I thank you so much for talking with me today. And I know that anyone who watches this is definitely going to be inspired. And I'll make sure to link Simple Abundance and other Other books as well in the comments. And is there anything else you want to add before we sign off? Just God bless you all. You're amazing. You're amazing. The world needs you. Go do amazing things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Now it's time for an affirmation. I am connected to my intuition. I allow myself to receive and follow its guidance so I may direct my life according to my highest self. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Take a look at the show notes if you want to read the affirmation you just heard, connect with Sarah, and links to everything we mentioned. If you learned something new today, share a screenshot of the episode with your takeaway on Instagram and tag at findyourgoodspace. I love resharing. And if you think other people would benefit from this information, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. See you soon.